What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another live stream from the Scalar Learning Channel. And today we are tackling the May calculator section of the math portion of the SAT. And this is an old one, but a good one. Hold on, I'm just making sure the audio is working. Let's hear. What's up, everybody? Welcome back it's to the live stream from the Scalar Learning All right. Channel. It's a little loud, so there we go. Okay, uh, I think we're good. So here we go. This is um, this is the day before, which is, of course, I love doing this. I want to make sure you guys go into the to the test feeling confident and ready and all that good stuff. I'm going to try and keep the comments. The sorry, try and keep the comments open down here. I know people have mentioned that it could be cool if I could look at the comments a little bit more during the test. It's a little hard because I'm taking it, but it is what it is. I see uh, a lot of comments here. This is awesome. What's up, Miriam? What's up, the pantry? A days. You guys are taking it tomorrow. Best of luck to all of you. Uh, let's see. Good luck. Yeah, I agree. Good luck to everybody. Just scrolling through the comments. Stephen Grady, what's up? Um, let's see. I love that a community is forming here. Like you guys are supporting each other. It's so dope. Um, what's up, Richard? How's it going? Uh, Fouad, you need to sleep after this. All right. Uh, any solution for panicking? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot. You can you can meditate. You can do some deep breathing. I mean, th that stuff is real and it actually helps and works. Okay, let me get the timer. Hey, what's up, Zoe? Zoe's back. Sabina, uh, hey, how's it going? I wish you guys all the best of luck. We're taking it tomorrow. Let's do this thing. Here we go. We're going to set the timer at 55 minutes because I do have an appointment in under an hour. I want to get going. We're going to set up the calculators. This is the calculator section. For those of you who are new to the channel, I'm taking this live in real time for the first time. So I'm actually going to be pivoting and thinking and problem solving in real time. That's the whole point. You can see that and mimic my strategies tomorrow on test day to do your absolute best. Yasser, you're very welcome. So hold on one second. I don't know the password going to. Okay. So anyways, oops, let me close this message. Ah, All right. Here we go, everybody. And if you are liking the, the video, I see a lot of you guys have already hit the like button. But if you guys could hit that like button, I would really appreciate it. it helps the helps it out tremendously, the channel, and to spread the word about the video. So I really appreciate that. What's up from Jamaica, Georgia? That's awesome. Uh, Kidus, a lot of in, new new names here that I don't that are new. So that's really cool. More people are coming to the channel. All right, here we go. We're gonna start the timer in three. To talk a little louder for me, I'm, I feel like the volume's pretty good right now. I'm checking the level, so I don't know. All right, here we go. Three, two, one. Let's do this. Ms. Anderson currently has 503 contacts on an online professional networking site. Her goal is to have at least 1,000 contacts. If she wants to meet this goal in 25 weeks, what is the minimum, sorry, what is the minimum number of contacts? Sorry, I'm getting distracted here. I'm getting text. Mr. Anderson currently has 530 contacts on a sign-in sheet. Okay, her goal is to have at least 1,000. She wants to meet this goal in 25 weeks. So 25 times the number per week. What's the minimum number she have on average per week should she add? So 25 times X plus 530 equals uh, 1,000 is her goal. I, I can't tell if that's 530 or 550. That's the part. I think it's 550. Let's just assume it's 550. So I subtract 550 from both sides, um, and that is 450 equals 25X divided by 25. Divide by 25, that should be 18. So if, it's, if it was 530... That would be four, shoot, you know, see the issue is it would be the 19 because then it would be 470 divided by 25, 18.8. So just, you know, cut me some slack if that is wrong because I can't read that. It's, but I think it's a 550. So that's the only problem with this test, a little blurry in some spots. Okay. Number two, at her summer job, Paula earns the same amount of money each hour she works. She earns 240 for working 20 hours. How much does she earn in five hours? So first of all, this will give me the hourly rate. She makes $12 per hour, right? 240 divided by 20. So then then 12 in five hours, we multiply this by five and you get 60. And notice they have the 12 in case you didn't read, read the whole question carefully. Number three, 3x equals 24. What is 2x minus three? Divide both sides by three. X equals eight. Plug it in here. Two times eight is 16 minus three is 13. Boom, done. Let's go back to the timer. Number four, Una sold boxes of cookies and bags of candy. The ratio of boxes of cookies, she sold to the to boxes of cookies. She sold to the bags of candies. She sold was two to one. Boxes of cookies. 
bags of candy, two to one. If Yuna sold eight boxes of cookies, how many bags of candy did she sell? Cross multiply, eight equals two X, X equals four. Let me just make sure I didn't read that wrong. So the ratio of, number of boxes of cookies to candy is two to one. Eight boxes of cookies, yeah, it's four, it's half. Uh oh, sorry. Numero five oh, for each repair job in elevator, in each repair job, an elevator technician charges R dollars per hour for each hour worked plus a flat fee of K dollars. So R times hours. Okay. If the technician charges 210 for a two hour job, which of the following represents the relationship between R and K? It's literally what I wrote here. It's this one. Let's just make sure I didn't make any mistakes. R dollars per hour for two hours. R dollars per hour plus a flat fee of K. Boom, done. Next. Number six, a box in the shape of a right rectangular prism has a, that's this guy. Oops, let's make that thicker. Boom, boom. Don't really even need to draw this, but it's okay. Has a volume of 60. If the dimensions of the box are three by five by H, what is the value of H? Well, to get the volume, it's this times this times this. So three times five is 15 times what equals 60? Four, boom, done. Numero seven, zero. Oh, a 15 foot wire and a five foot wire were each cut completely into 10 inch pieces. Okay, so 15 feet is, 15 times 12 is 180 inches and that's 60 inches. How many more 10 inch pieces resulted from the 15 foot wire? How many more, they underlined it, from the 15 foot wire than the five foot wire. So if each of them are 10 inch pieces, this is 18 and this would be six, right? 66 at 180, 18, so 12 more. <clears throat> Number eight, parabola in the XY plane has equation this, okay, which of the following shows the X intercepts of the parabola as constants or coefficients, meaning the x-intercepts are where y goes to zero, right? And I already know what that is. It's, it's, it's 11. Because if, if I zero out y, those go away, and it'd be what minus 11 equals zero? 11. So I should see 11 in the answer for the y-intercepts. Wait, sorry, for the x-intercepts. The only one where I see that is this one. And just assuming that this is still the same deal. Yeah, is this one because this is in vertex form. This is also in vertex form. Let me just make sure x-intercepts, I'm not messing something up, right? X-intercepts is where y equals zero. Yeah, it's 11. Okay, good, done. Number nine, the sum of two different numbers, x and y. So when I read that, x and y is 70. I turn it into equation. And the difference when the smaller number is subtracted from the larger number is 30. I'm gonna assume x is the smaller number. We'll just make that assumption. What is the value of x times y? So the difference when the smaller number is subtracted from the larger number. So, and it doesn't matter. Y can be the bigger. X can be the bigger. It's all good. So now, actually, let's flip that around. I'm going to show you why because I'm seeing a chance for elimination. I'm going to make it X minus Y. I'm going to make X the larger equals 30. What is the value of X, Y? So look, I can use elimination. Add the two equations. Those cancel out. I get 2X equals 100. X equals 50. If X equals 50... Y must equal 20, right? Because the two adds together to 70. The difference of the two is 30. It works. What's the value of X times Y or 50 times 20? 1,000. Boom, done. Number 10. A ball was dropped from a height of 1.5 meters and hit the ground several times. The graph above represents the height in meters of the ball T seconds after it was dropped. Of the following, which best approximates the maximum height in meters of the ball between the second and third time it hit the hold on of the following which best approximates the maximum height in meters of the ball between the second and third time it hit the ground so it's from here down to here okay the graph above represents the height h in me the graph above represents the height h in meters of the ball t seconds after it was dropped right wait a minute what am i talking what am i doing here it's the maximum height in meters of the ball between 
What? Now I just got confused. The maximum. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It is this. It's just right here. I was, I, I don't know what my mind is wandering or something. It's 0. 0.8. Which represents approximately the maximum height between the second and third time it hit the car. Oh, no, 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 no. Second, that's here. And third time, that's here. It's 0. 0.4. Sorry. Between this, let me, I don't know what's going on. Yeah, and point eight is an answer too, but it's it's second and third, so boom, boom. Okay, sorry, brain freeze. Okay, eleven. Which of the following is an equation of the circle in the xy plane that has center zero zero and radius four? This is zero zero. This is a radius of two. This is a radius of square root of eight because it, this is the radius squared. So it's that one. Radius of four. Boom. Done. All right, twelve. Which of the following expressions is equivalent to this? One half power, by the way, is basically the square root. So all we're doing is we're square rooting this whole thing. So the square root of 16x to the ninth y cubed is simply 4, because the square root of 16 is 4. Square root of 9 is, oh, they turned it into, uh, you know what? They just distributed the exponent. They didn't turn it into radical form. They kept it in rational. So we're multiplying. That becomes x to the 9 halves, and that becomes y to the 3 halves. So it is this one. That's it. Yeah. All right. Numero 12. -0. At the beginning of a laboratory experiment, Miguel had 10 milliliters of solution in a flask. The first step of the experiment consisted of Miguel pouring X into the solution into the beaker and Y into the solution of a different beaker. The remained, the, there remained at least four milliliters of the solution in the flask. Let's say that's the flask after the first step. Inequalities can be used to correctly represent this. At least four, milli, four milliliters. So it should be, <clears throat> I believe it's this one because let me just make sure I'm getting this right. Hold on. Miguel had 10 millimeters of a solution of fast. The first step of the experiment is of him pouring X into a beaker and Y into a different beaker. So he's removing X and he's removing Y. There remained at least four milliliters. So greater than or equal to four. I just don't know where they got this five from. And the four and all this, like that's weird to me. Mm, I'm just making sure I didn't make a silly mistake here. Take away X, take away Y, and it's greater than or equal to 4. Yeah, I think it's good to go. All right. 14, to determine if cooking with olive oil reduces the risk of heartburn. I get that. From men. Researchers interviewed a random sample of 5,500 men who had no history of heartburn. Study participants were identified as either regular or occasional olive oil users. Hold on. I find it's either regular or occasional olive oil years. Five year, years later, researchers interviewed the men again. They found that the proportion of men who experienced frequent heartburn was significantly lower for men identified as regular olive oil users, which I find is the most appropriate conclusion. Olive oil use causes a reduction in the risk. So this is way too definite, like way too extreme, right? Because you don't ever want to go with something that like it definitely causes this. Olive oil use causes a reduction in the risk of heartburn for men, but not why. Where does the, where do they say that? Right. It's not it's like, oh, yeah, well, I guess it is men. So that's a little bit better. This is men and women. So that's out. Uh, let's just leave that unchecked for now. But anyways, there's an association. All right. This is already sounding better. There's an association between olive oil use and the risk of heartburn for men and women, but it is not necessarily a cause and effect relation. Okay, hold on. This is a, there's, an, there's an association between olive oil use and the risk of heartburn, and the association may not exist for women. I like this best because they didn't do any, they didn't use any women in this study. So to me, that feels the most appropriate. Okay. 15. A wildlife biologist uses the formula, this one, to estimate the height in centimeters of an elephant from its foot to its shoulder based on the circumference C in centimeters of the elephant's footprint. All right. So this is height. 
and this is circumference. If the wildlife biologist finds a circular elephant footprint that has a diameter of 30 centimeters, AKA the circumference is 30 pi, while on a zoological study, which of the following is close to the biologist's estimates of the height? So it's 3 times 30 pi, which is 90 pi, which is, I guess, this one. Sixteen. The circumference C of a mother's elephant circular footprint is four times the circumference of a baby elephant circular footprint. What is the ratio of the height of the mother to the height of the baby? It's still going to be four to one, I believe, because there's no squaring happening or anything like that. Now, if you're not sure, right, we could say, so we could say baby is B, mother is 4B, right? So it would be, the baby would be 3B, the mother would be three times that, which is 12B. It's still a one to four, but it's, it's not one to four. It says ratio of mother to baby. So we got to do mother first, then baby. That's why it's four to one, not one to four. 16, 17, X to the 24th day equals extra. Okay. Uh, what is the value of A? So I'm going to distribute, distribute. So it's X to the 24A equals X to the 8th. 24A equals 8. Divide both sides by 24. Divide both sides by 24. A equals 8 over 24 or 1 third. Boom. Done. 18. Which value is a Y coordinate of a solution to the system of equations above? All right. This is, uh, so mm, I'm going to use, uh, Elimination, I'm just going to combine these because I see the y's cancel out nicely. So I get x squared plus x equals 7 plus 5 is 12. Subtract 12 from both sides and it equals 0. Then factor, factor equals 0. x minus x plus. So it would be plus 4 minus 3 because those multiply negative 12 add to positive 1. That's the middle thing. So the x values are 3 and negative 4 which means the y values are three, three minus y equals five and negative four minus y equals five. So this one would be negative y equals nine or y equals negative nine, that's not there. This one would be negative y equals two or y equals negative two, boom. Okay, so now we're gonna test that because I got negative two with, what was it, negative four? Or sorry, with three. 3 minus negative 2 is 5. 3 squared is 9 plus... N Wait. Sorry. Wait a minute. Sorry, what? Hold on. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 9 and then plus negative 2 is 7. All right, I was just checking the answers. They both work. Okay, that is 18, now 19. Two questions to this. 39 minutes to go. An airplane flies directly from a city in Pennsylvania to a city in Ecuador. This equation above estimates the distance D in miles from the city in Ecuador of the airplane T hours after taking off from the city in Pennsylvania. So I believe that's, I'm going to rewrite it, 2.565 minus 500 T, it looks like, because that's the variable. It's a little blurry, but I think that's right. Which of the following is the best interpretation of the number 2565? So hold on. From the city in Pennsylvania. So that means you're starting off 2,565 miles away, and then you're, you're, you're gaining 500 miles, or you're getting 500 miles closer every hour. The distance in miles, the distance in miles the airplane travels between the two cities is that one. All right, number 20. According to the equation, approximately how many hours will it take the airplane to travel between the two cities? Okay, it's where D equals zero. So you just set the equation equal to zero. Um, and then it's negative 2565 equals negative 500T. So we're gonna divide both sides by negative 500. 2565 divided by equals 5.13 there it is that makes sense right five and that's 2500.1 
is 50. And that's about right. Yeah, I feel that's good. 21. Survey sent to... Survey sent to and returned from 17 neighborhoods. The scatter plot above shows the number of surveys sent to and returned from people in 17 different neighborhoods. A line of best fit for the data is also shown. For the neighborhood that had surveys sent to 800 people, which of the following is close to the positive difference between the actual number of surveys returned and the number predicted by the line of best fit? Okay. What's the positive difference between the actual number of surveys? So 800 people, it's going to be on this line. So there's, and then there's the value is 600 and the line predict the value predicted is like maybe 460. So the positive difference would be 140 approximately. 150 is our best answer. Let me just make sure I didn't read that wrong. A line of best fit is the data shown for the neighborhood that had so it's an area to 800 people, which is the following. So it's the positive difference between the actual number of surveys returned predicted by the, yeah, perfect. 22 annual production in thousands of units, factory W, factory Z. So product P, W makes more, or Z makes more. Product Q, Z also makes more. Each factory during a year. The function above F represents the projected annual Revenue from sales of product as a function of price per unit where A and K are constants. So you see there's a sweet spot here where profit, because or revenue, sorry, is maximized right around here and then it drops. And X is the price per unit. K we is whatever, probably that max value. Okay, I like to always understand the graphs and everything pretty well before I jump into the question. Based on the graph of F, which of the following is a factor of f of x what does that mean what is going to make the y intercept go what's going to hit the x intercept so x is a factor because it goes at zero zero and 500 or x minus 500 i mean and it is this one all right because if you plug 500 in it must be zero out and get an x intercept which of the following is closest to the percent of the total number of units to percent of the total number of units of products P and Q combined. The percent of the total number of units. Factory Z. Okay. So factory Z is 32 plus 24, which is 56 out of 56 plus 35. It's 91. 56 is 35. So 56 divided by 91, that's factory Z, right? 62%. I mean, a factory Z annually, 62%. Boom, done. Yeah. 24. For five consecutive even integers, the sum of the first and the third. So that's X, X plus 1, X plus 2, X plus 3, and X plus 4. Those are the four, five consecutive integer, even, oh, even integers, yowzers. I messed up. If it's even, it's X, X plus 2, X plus 4, X plus 6, and X plus 8. The sum of the first and third integers is, that's equal, 20 less than three times the fourth. 20 less than that is minus 20. There we go. And then we just got to get X plus eight is what we're trying to solve for. We got the perfect equation. Let's go. 22 X plus four equals three X plus 18 minus 20. And then I'll subtract two X from both sides and I get four equals X, right? Two, three X minus two X is X. 18 minus 20 is negative two. Add two to both sides, X equals six. What is the fifth term, fifth in integer? Six plus eight, which is 14. Now let's check if that's right. So that means it's six, eight, 10, 12, and 14. So the sum of the first and the third, six and 10 is 16, is 20 less then three times the fourth. Three times the fourth is 36 minus 20 is 16. Boom, works. 25, a polling agency wanted to test whether a ballot would ballot measure um, would pass with greater than 50% yes votes. Okay. 
The agency sampled 1,000 registered voters selected at random, and 50.6 of the voters favored the va ballot measure. Hold on. The margin of error associated with this poll was plus or minus three, which means it could go as low as 47.6, as high as 53.6. Based on the poll's results, that's the margin of error. Based on the poll's results, which of the following statements must be true? The percentage of voters who will vote yes. No, that's too definitive. The ballot measure will pass with more yes votes, but the percent, no. No, because 47.6 means it might fail. The ballot measure will pass with, no. The poll results do not provide sufficient evidence to conclude that the, yeah. Because they're kind of straddling whether it'll pass or fail. 26. The table above shows the results of an experiment involving the effect of two treatments, A and B, on plants. Based on the results, what fraction of the plants thrived? Receive treatment A. Okay. What fraction of the plants that thrived? So we're immediately in this section. We don't care about the regressed, right? Received treatment A. It's 120 that thrived and received treatment A. What fraction of the plants that thrived? So, And then the total plants that thrived is 180. So that's just 12 out of 18 or two-thirds. Boom. Done. 27. We're doing great with time. Sample of seawater is 2.5% salt by mass and contains 1,000 grams of salt. Okay. Which of the following is closest to the mass in grams of the sample? Got it. Okay, so 0 0.035, which is 3.5% of some known sample size is 1,000 grams of salt. So I'm literally translating that first sentence into an equation of the sample. Now to solve, we just can solve for x. Divide both sides by 0 0.035. It's definitely not these guys. It's one of these two. 1,000 divided by 0 0.035 is this one apparently no stop maximizing i wish they'd get rid of that button 28 the graph of the function f is shown in the xy plane above and selected values for the function g are shown in the table for which of the following values of x is g of x greater than f of x okay hold on the graph of the XY. selected values of the function g are in the table for Okay, so where is g of x bigger than f of x? This is like really straightforward. Um, here. That's it. Oh, sorry, sorry. No, it's not straightforward. <laughs> this is the, these are the x. Okay, sorry, my bad. So when x is negative 1, f of x is, looks like it's 2, and g of x is negative 2, not negative 1. Well, I shouldn't cross that out. Let's say x. That, or like... You know what I'm saying? Cancel. When when x is 0, g of x is 2, but f of x is 3. That one is no good. When x is 1, g of x is... That's definitely wrong because here it's up all the way up there. At 2, it's negative... It's probably this one. Because at 3, f of x is 0. So x equals 3. f of x is 0 and g of x is 1. 29, an archaeologist estimates that as a result of erosion, the height of the Great Pyramid of Giza has been decreasing at a constant rate since it was built. The function above is used by the archaeologist to model. So this is really hard to read. I think this is a 7 and a 5, and that's a 1, and that's a T, and that's minus 181, I, I believe. Okay. The function above is used to, are to model the height in feet of the pyramid T years after it was built. I, th I believe that's a negative, right? Hmm. Why would you be starting? Oh, hold on. Is that a negative or is that a plus? Maybe it's maybe this is a plus and it just didn't come out right. Because why would it start in negative 181? Because this is the y-intercept. So this, I, this makes sense that this would be negative because it's coming down according to this, because it's eroding, right? Yeah, it's erosion. So, and T is T the years after, right? So every 175 years, so it says, according to the function, which is the final statement is true. This is saying every 175 years, so I plug in 175, that goes to negative one. 
it drops um by a foot i yeah by a foot every it's this one every 1750 it drops by 10 feet because every 175 it drops by one right and it doesn't say in tens or anything 100 years nope um because that doesn't make sense that and then every year no this is that would be bananas because they'd be just in the ground already so that's it a makes the most sense again i hopefully i i can i was reading that correctly i believe i did all right 30 a biologist grows a culture of bacteria as a part of an experiment at the start of the experiment there are 75 in the culture the bacteria biologist observes the population of bacteria doubles every 18 minutes 75 then 18 50 36 would be through i always like to do this i think this is a great strategy then 54 is 600 okay the biologist observes that the population double. okay which of the following equations best models the number n of bacteria t hours after the start of the experiment so in this case if it's one hour you would do t divided by wait a minute you do 60 t divided by 18 okay here's why <clears throat> the number of hours like i know that when i plug in like uh what is 0.18 of 60 i mean sorry what is 18 divided by 60 it's 0.3 right i know that if i plug in 0.3 for hours right it's 18 minutes if i plug in 0.3 i should get it doubling you know what i'm saying and basically meaning the exponent should go to one so i should see something like this or oh, let's reduce it because i see i think it's that one 10 thirds so if i divide both of these by six i get 10 over 3t so i think it's going to be this guy but let's but before we go to that let's just look at all the other things they all start with the value 75 that's good um this one's linear so that's ridiculous this one's also linear that's ridiculous it's got to be exponential and then why is this wrong well this would be right if it was t minutes right because then if i plug in 18 boom it'd be to the first part plug in 36 to the second part and so on and so forth but we're talking about hours so this makes more sense like 18 minutes would be 0.3 hours plug that in 0.3 times 10 is 3 3 over 3 is 1 this gives me the 150 that i'm supposed to get at 18 minutes you see so just got to be mindful of that uh conversion of the uh, you know minutes to hours okay 31. now we should see a reset in difficulty which is always nice the solid lines in the figure above represent the root of a football player and the Dash line represents the distance from his starting point at which the player was stopped. What is the value of X? This is, it's five. Because this is a 5, 12, 13 right triangle. If you have that Pyth uh, Pythagorean triple memorized, if you don't use Pythagorean's theorem, X squared plus 12 squared equals 13 squared, right? 12 squared is 144. 13 is, squared is 169. Subtract, you get 25 equals X squared. Square root, you get five. So two ways to do it, both really fast. Last year, Gary's tomatoes plants produced 24 kilograms of tomatoes. This year, Gary increased the number of tomato plants in his garden by 25%. So 25% of that is one fourth, which is six. So now it's 30. If his plants reduced tomatoes this year at the same rate per plant last year. Hold on. Tomato plants in his garden by 25 It's 30. It's just 30 because they're producing the same amount, but 25% more. That's it. We said 25% of that is six. Add that on is 30. 33. Country, Brazil, China. Okay, median age, age of population. So Brazil is a very young country. Germany is a little bit older, 45. India is very young. Nigeria is really young. United States is 37. Okay. What is the range in years of the median ages of the population for the countries in the table above? Find the lowest, find the highest, which I believe was Germany. Range is highest minus lowest. Didn't say to round, so we're good to go. For, let's use the calculator. 45.3 minus 17.9. Before I hit enter, make sure I didn't make any mistakes. 45.3, 17.9, and it is 27.4. All right. 34. In the system of equations above, A is a constant such that uh, A is between 0 and 1 third. Great. 
If x, y is the solution to the system, what is one possible value of y? All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in something random for a. I'm going to plug in I'm going to plug in one fifth because that will turn that into a one. That's allowed, right? That's between zero and one third. So one half x equals one fifth, and then the other one is x plus y equals five times one fifth, which is one. All right. So what is one? So here now I can solve for x. Multiply both sides by two. X equals two fifths. Plug that in here. 2 fifths plus y equals 1. y, of course, equals 3 fifths. I believe that is acceptable. I think here they're going to take a range of values because a could be 1 hundredth, 1 thousandth. Like, it doesn't matter. But y could, yeah, so 3 fifths, I mean, that makes sense. 3 fifths and 2 fifths equals um, 1, and that's 1 fifth. And then x is 1, uh, sorry, 2 fifths times 1 half is 1 fifth. So I believe that works. 35, if the expression above is equal to the expression in the form of x plus a, where a, x is not equal to negative 6, what will the, be the value of a? All right, so there's two ways to do this. You can either do synthetic division, or you can recognize that this is factorable. I like to go factoring myself. That is 6 times 11, and that happens to work out, right? 6 times 11 is 66. 6 plus 11 is 17. Then we go over x plus 6. We can cancel, cancel, and that's why they say x cannot equal negative 6 because that was 0 out the denominator. x plus 11 is what remains. x plus a. a, therefore, is 11, 36. A line shown in the xy plane above, a second line not shown is parallel and passed through the points 1, 1. Let's just draw it in for fun. 1, 1. It's got a slope of negative 3 over 4. With this nice tool, I can do this very easily. Make a nice line here. And pass through points 1, 1, and 3C, where C is a constant with the value of C. This is really easy with the fact that I've drawn it, right? 3, and when you go through 3, it looks like it hits, um, ooh, 2.5. I don't like that. But... We can, um, we can verify this algebraically. So parallel means it's going to have the same slope. So it's going to be, as I say negative, it's positive. It's up 3 to the right fourth. So it's 3 fourths. So it's y equals 3 fourths x plus b. We don't know what b is, but we know the coordinate 1, 1 exists. So plug 1 in for y, 1 in for x equals 3 fourths plus b. So b equals 1 minus 3 fourths, which is 1 fourth. Kind of looks like where it crosses there. So my equation is y equals 3 fourths x plus 1 fourth. And then we need to solve for C, a.k.a. plug in 3. So I plug in 3, and I get 9 fourths plus 1 fourth is 10 fourths, which is 5 halves, which is the same as 2.5. So we could say 5 halves. You can put it as an improper or 2.5. 37, two problems remaining. And we got a double, double header. Scatterplot above shows the average fuel economy for a certain class of car driven at 12 different speeds. Got it. The graph for the quadratic model for the data is shown. So at 20 miles an hour, hold on, 12 different speeds, right? So at 20 miles an hour, it shows it's going to have a fuel economy of like whatever. Sorry, 20 miles, yeah, 23 or 20, 24.5 or something. Up here is the best at 45 miles an hour. It's got a nice 30 miles per gallon or something. And then here at 70, it drops back down, right? Okay. 37, 38. For what fraction of the 12 speeds does the model overestimate? So it's tw something over 12, first of all. Oh, does the model overestimate the fuel economy? So where are these dots under it? It's two, three, right? Does the model overestimate the fuel economy or one-fourth? You don't have to reduce it if this fits in the grid, um, but I always do. Just, I don't know. Mm, let me just make sure I read that right. For what fraction of the 12 speeds does the model overestimate? Yeah, that's right. Okay. 
38. The quadratic model predicts the average fuel economy to be 26 miles per gallon for how many different speeds? It's got to be two. But that, there's 26 miles per gallon. Here's the model. One, two, two speeds. They don't want to know the speeds. They just want to know how many, and it's two. And that is it. We are done. We finished with a lot of time. 17 minutes doesn't necessarily mean I crushed it, right? We got to double check the answers first. But it felt like a pretty reasonable test minus the uh, ones that I you know, couldn't really read. But hold on. Okay, let's go ahead and grade this. And then I'll see if I can take some questions if I have time. Let's see. Here we go, ACDA. ACDA. Then I got five is ABCA, A, B, C, A. Then I got nine is C, B, C, B. C, B, C, B. Then I got 13 is a D D C A D D C. So far, so good. Let's go with seventeen. B C C D B C C D. Then I got twenty one. A D C B A D C B. Yeah. Then I've got twenty. Oops, 25. Hold on. D, D, A, D. D, D, A. Yes. The last two are A and C. All right. We've got it. Now we go to the free response. Here we go. Fingers crossed. We got five. We got 30. We got 27.4. Boom. We've got what? Oh, it can be anything between zero and one. So three fifths is acceptable. We've got 11, 2.5, legend. Did I say one fourth? Yes. One fourth. And finally, two. We got 100%. All right, let's see what we got. Okay. Uh, oh, thank you for all the likes, everybody. I really appreciate it. And if you haven't clicked like yet, but you did like the video, go ahead and click that like button. Um, Hey, Teresa, you're going to watch my videos all night. Amazing. All right. Let's see. Found it easy. Um, yeah, you know this is, a, this is a real test, by the way, guys. People are asking. Okay, the comments are just flying in. Hey, Lucas. Awesome, man. Good luck to you. I know you've been here, and you've been crushing it every day, so that's amazing. Zoe, yo, good luck to you, Zoe. Good luck to everybody. I love it. Like I said, this is such a great community. I think somebody mentioned you guys forming a Snapchat. I think you guys should do that. That's incredible. Support each other. Um, maybe we can even organize some, uh, I don't know, uh, you know, just, just do it and, and work together and be a team. And that's amazing. And, uh, I'll try my best. If you guys, you know, feel free to reach out to me via email. Tell me your stories. I, I got some people that are going to be doing some video testimonies for the channel soon, which is amazing. So, yeah, like this is it. Um, you guys are taking it tomorrow. I hope this has been good for you. I know you guys on the East Coast, it's almost four o'clock. I wouldn't study too much more. You can study a little bit more if you want, but now's the time to put the pencil down, relax, have a good dinner, chill out, and go to sleep. Uh, go to sleep early and get good sleep. I got a video here that I want to share for you guys, which is morning of SAT during the COVID time. Uh, this is a important video that you guys should check out tonight. All right, so let's see if I can get it up here. Uh, thanks, y uh, Yagami. Oh, Miriam, you're so welcome. Yeah, I, I, I actually don't even know what Discord is really. I, I know um, maybe I can create a Discord and figure out what, what that is, but, but yeah. Um, Maksud, thank you for the kind words. And, uh, oh, you're taking it on the... Oh, so you're taking it on the 14th. I thought you were taking it tomorrow. Okay, I will keep making SAT videos, and we're going to start making other math videos as well. That's on the horizon, but I'll talk to you guys about that more later. 
Thank you guys so much for joining. This has been such a, a big showing, so it's really, it really makes me feel good. It makes me feel like I'm doing stuff that's been valuable for you guys. I wish you all the best of luck tomorrow. Crush it. Stay safe. The, the world is in, in disarray right now, but you guys are here focused, studying. That speaks a lot to your commitment and abilities and, and just desire and drive, and that's what it's all about. I mean, that's, I think, what life is all about. So that, this shows it right there. Thank you guys so much. Yo, I appreciate you guys. Thank you guys so much. And I will see you in the next video. Take it easy.